every day the people of Ontario continue to do their part to put an end to the pandemic. You continue to follow the public health measures that we know work and keep us safe. And you have rolled up your sleeves to receive the vaccine, ensuring strong protection against COVID-19. Well, these efforts are now paying off. We have surpassed our vaccination targets for step three, and other key indicators are trending in the right direction. With this in mind, the province will move to step three of the roadmap to reopen on Friday, July 16th at 12.01 a.m. We expect these positive trends to continue over the coming days before entering step three of the roadmap, and we will continue to monitor the data very closely. Step three focuses on the safe resumption of additional indoor services with larger numbers of people, but with restrictions in place. But this means people will be able to enjoy even more activities they've missed, such as going to the gym. The gym is being permitted to operate at 50% capacity with this distancing and other measures in place. Capacity for spectators at indoor and outdoor sports and recreational fitness facilities subject to a maximum of 50% of the usual seating capacity or 1,000 people. Capacity for outdoor spectators is 75% of the usual seating capacity or 15,000 people, whichever is less. Opening indoor dining with capacity limited to the number of people that can physically distance and no limits on the number of people per table and cinemas, concerts, theater and other performing art venues operating indoors can occur with capacity limits. Face coverings in indoor public settings and physical distancing requirements remain in place throughout step three. This is because of the ongoing threat of the Delta strain of COVID. Face coverings will also be required in some outdoor public settings as well. This is generally in alignment with the advice on personal public health measures issued by the Public Health Agency of Canada and with the World Health Organization recommendations. We will continue to evaluate the requirement and need for indoor face coverings on an ongoing basis. Physical distancing requirements will also remain in place throughout step three. But it is an exciting day for Ontario. While we're making great progress, certainly the pandemic is not yet over. The Delta variant is the dominant strain in Ontario and continues to pose a threat to the public's health. And public Health Ontario has now detected six cases of the Lambda variant, which has crossed international borders and entered our province. So the fight is far from over we must remain vigilant, especially going into the fall as we go, go into closed spaces, closed spaces, and closed ventilation systems. The province will remain in step three of the roadmap for at least 21 days. If at that time, 80% of the eligible population age 12 and over has received one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, and 75% have received their second dose, with no public health unit having less than 70% of their population fully vaccinated, and other key public health and health system indicators continue to remain stable, then the vast majority of public health and work safety measures will be lifted. This includes lifting capacity limits for indoor and outdoor settings and limits for social gatherings. Only a small number of measures will remain in place, including the requ requirement for passive screening, such as posting a sign and businesses requiring a safety plan. Ontario's current data situation is distinct from other jurisdictions, with the Delta variant being the dominant strain in Ontario, which is not the case in other provinces, and our case counts are higher than British Columbia and Alberta, for example. We also have active outbreaks of Delta variant in several of our smaller health units. As we move forward with reopening Ontario, I ask that everyone continue to follow the public health measures and advice that are in place to protect us and please continue to come forward and get vaccinated. 
Vaccines are our ticket out of this pandemic and will help us continue to make the progress we're making with reopening of Ontario. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to taking questions. We'll go to the phone lines. Just a reminder, one question, one follow-up. Over to the first question, please. Your first question comes from John McGrath from TVO. John, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Doctor. Uh, as recently as a few days ago, you sounded uh, far more cautious. I think just last week you said that you did not want to move up the uh, uh, entry into step three uh, any sooner than the 21 day uh, interval. Uh, what has changed? Well, I have to thank all Ontarians. Our immunization strategy is working really, really well. If you recall, the original uh, uh, goals for opening of step three were 70 to 80 percent first doses and 25 percent second doses. Uh, and as of today, and the reports I've received, 78.9% of us have received uh, eligible, uh, 18 and over, have received our first doses, and 527 have received their second doses. We are also uh, having our rate of second doses go up by almost 10% every week. So I have to thank all Ontarians. It's through immunization that we'll be able to limit the spread of this virus, uh, be able to um, minimize the impact on our healthcare system, and in terms of our healthcare metrics, um, we've only had 183 cases today. So that, again, is trending in the right direction. The percentage of all tests that are positive uh, is also trending at 0.7% today. The number of people in our intensive care units is also trending in the right direction. We're down to 202 individuals that are requiring intensive care monitoring and support. Um, so all of those metrics, together with Ontarians coming forward uh, with having a high rate of immunization, gives me hope that we can open safely. We'll continue to monitor all the data as we move into step three, uh, but I didn't see any reason to hold us back, given that so many Ontarians have come forward. Over 200,000 a day are coming forward uh, to get immunized. So that has changed, uh, and the, uh, the correlation as you build population immunity with the plummeting case counts uh, is so wonderful to see. Um, and we have to keep up that great work. Follow up. Uh, speak, speaking of that work, um, we've already had briefings this week about uh, some of the changes to the vaccine uh, strategy going forward. But uh, this, uh, this new threshold for uh, you know, a step four or a post step three uh, period, getting 80% uh, of uh, people vaccinated, um, is that something that, uh, you know, given that our, our, our rates are likely to s slow down somewhat, is, is that a realistic timeline within 21 days from next Friday? Yeah, I'm going to have to follow that very, very closely. I do think it's an ambitious target. It is a call to arms to all Ontarians. I think all of us want to have um, a, a return uh, to the post-pandemic world. Um, where we try to live with this virus going into the fall. Uh, and that safest way we can have that occur is to have the highest immunization rate. Uh, and, and it is a good, I think, and reasonable target to have 80% of our population that's eligible immunized. Um, uh, and, and I hope we can get there. I know our health units, our hospitals, our pharmacists, our primary care physicians are all dedicated to helping us achieve that. Uh, and uh, the vaccine supply is improving. So I'm optimistic that we can do it. Uh, but all Ontarians, if you haven't been immunized yet, please consider it. Please call your primary care provider. Talk to your pharmacist. If you have any questions about the safety or effectiveness, um, please have those answers uh, provided to you. These vaccines are doing the job. Our case counts are decreasing significantly. Our communities are becoming safer. But every Ontarian needs to do their part by getting immunized. Next question. Your next question comes from... Dave Woodard from Global News. Dave, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Moore. Uh, I want to talk about the vaccination targets. Um, a couple uh, points. How much of that is an incentive for people to get fully vaccinated? Uh, and will the province start getting family doctors more involved in getting vaccine to arms to get to that vaccine, vaccination target? Yeah, the... the uh 
target of 80% is based on modeling, uh, and it's the um, how best we can limit the effect of Delta as we move into the fall. I absolutely do expect that we'll have an increase in cases in the fall as we move indoors. That's normal with any respiratory virus that the transmissibility increases. Uh, and it's our job to anticipate that and to have the highest immunization rate we can. So it's not an incentive, it's that based on modeling that will protect all of us, protect our schools, our colleges, our families, our businesses. No one really wants to go back to any uh, significant public health measures or closures, no one. Uh, uh, and the way as a community, as a population, as a province, we can avoid that is by having the highest immunization rate achievable. 80% will slow this virus down significantly at a population level uh, and decrease its ability uh, to spread and cause harm in hospitalizations and the requirements for intensive care settings. Um, so uh, we have, a, a, the clock is ticking, we have several weeks, uh, six to seven weeks uh, before September to really um, uh, talk to your family, to your friends, ensure that they get vaccinated, ensure that they get any questions uh, about the vaccines answered, uh, and then we get as many needles in arms as possible uh, in, in this shortest time frame as the next seven weeks. Follow up. Uh, and Dr. Moore, uh, family doctors are asking to be more hands-on involved in getting those vaccines into arms. Is that going to happen? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, having been a medical officer of health in, in Kingston, Frontenac, uh, Lennox and Addington, we had fabulous relationship with our primary care physicians. They worked at our assessment centers. They work, they are working at our immunization centers. They are running their own immunization clinics uh, at one of the local arenas. I do believe that that's happening across Ontario. That song may not be getting sung enough, uh, but they, they have been great partners. The next piece is to have the vaccine in their fridges, in their offices, where they can immunize uh, and do catch up for those individuals that didn't make it to an assessment center or didn't make it uh, uh, to uh, one of the larger centers. So I absolutely believe uh, primary care has to be part of the solution to this uh, and thank them for all the work they've been doing throughout the pandemic. Uh, and that is the next phase to, to allow that last 10 to 15% of people to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with their healthcare provider, their nurse, their nurse practitioner, their physician, I think is gonna be key. Uh, and I'm certainly encouraged that, encouraging that partnership across Ontario. Next question. Your next question comes from Lorenda Redekop from CBC. Lorenda, please go ahead. Hi there, Dr. Moore. Uh, how much of a concern is the variance of concern spread? We've got the situation in Grey Bruce County as well as Waterloo Region, which I'm not actually clear if it is moving to step three along with the rest of the province. So how much of a concern is that? Oh, the, the variants of concern are what keep me up at night, uh, and especially the Delta. Uh, I am very concerned that it's more transmissible, that it may tend to have a higher risk of hospitalization. Uh, the good news for Ontario is that we're continually to uh, continually to protect those that are the most vulnerable. If we look at the first and second doses of those over 80, 70, 60, we've done wonderfully well. Uh, it's the unimmunized, though, now that are our real target, that are catching the infection and are spreading it amongst unimmunized individual. Uh, and we should also know that the vaccine can only give so much protection. It gives roughly a 10% reduction um, in, in, um, in your risk of getting uh, I'm sorry, it gives a significant reduction in your risk for getting hospitalized uh, and your risk of death. So the two, but you need two doses to have that maximum protection against Delta. Uh, and, and we, in a very short time frame, we need to get those that are unvaccinated vaccinated to protect them and not have an impact on our health system heading into the fall. There are various different modelers that I'm just getting uh, 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 their reviews from over the last several days that shows we need to get that last percentage. I think there are lessons learned and, and, and thank you to the communities in Waterloo and the Grey Bruce that are, that are working so hard to increase their immunization rates and, and reduce the risk uh, of uh, Delta and coming forward and getting tested if they have any symptoms. 
Uh, those we're going to learn from those communities. We're interviewing their healthcare providers, their public health experts, and seeing what additional strategies we need uh, to to protect our communities if it if this Delta starts spreading in other um, regions of the province. Uh, but they're doing relatively well, but it's hard to control. Uh, and hence the need we all have to be vigilant and maximize our immunization rates across this province. Follow up. Sure. It, it, as part of the second uh, answer, if you could just clarify whether Waterloo Region is oh, moving on at the same time. And then I'll just, the rest of the question is, what will tell you whether we need to put the brakes on or go backwards? What will you be looking for? So um, the reopening of Ontario on the uh, 16th at 12.01 a.m. is for all of Ontario. Any medical officer of health in partnership um, with their boards uh, and their municipalities can decide um, if that timing is right for them. Uh, and they can put in limitations under the Reopening of Ontario Act or through a Section 22 order uh, to try to minimize the risk in their community. So uh, in, in that way, it's, I, it ha I wanna be very clear, all of Ontario is opening uh, on the 16th but some regions that are current hotspots have the opportunity to hold their communities back if necessary based on their current review of their data. Um, so, and they can do that in guidance with this office uh, and would can provide uh, support um, on any communication or assessment of the risk. Uh, I haven't heard from them yet uh, on their anticipation of uh, joining the rest of the province um, for a step uh, two or three, or for step three, um, uh, uh, but uh, I'm in daily contact uh, with uh, those areas. Next question. Your next question comes from Robert Benzi from the Toronto Star. Robert, please go ahead. Uh, Dr. Moore, I wanted to ask you about uh, step four, which I guess hasn't been named step four, but it looks like step four to me, um, which would start by my calculations on August 6th, and that's the one that requires 80% of everyone 12 and up to have one shot and 75% to have both shots. So by my calculations right now, today, we have 78.1% of 12 and up have one shot, but only 50.4% have uh, both shots. Are you confident that you can achieve that target uh, of 75 with both shots. It looks like it's mostly among 12 to 17 year olds that you'll have to hit. So very, very good question. Number one, to be clear, reopening of Ontario Act uh, um, uh, affects all of our jurisdictions. Uh, the goals that we have set uh, are, uh, I think, attainable. Um, we have capacity, we have vaccine, uh, and we have means of delivery of the vaccine uh, across uh, Ontario. Uh, and, and so uh, if more people are coming forward, we do have additional capacity and have the vaccine uh, if necessary. Uh, it, it will be a challenge to all of us, uh, uh, especially those that haven't been vaccinated, uh, to come forward uh, in this short time frame. Um, the, uh, the reopening of Ontario Act had three steps and three steps only. Um, there was not ever a contemplation of a fourth step. It is a gradual reopening of Ontario and our economy um, with after step three is a full opening um, with some uh, public health measures if appropriate. Um, but that will be guided, guided by data and we'll have to follow that situation closely. So there was no, uh, to be clear, no anticipated uh, step four uh, in this plan. Follow up. So, uh, it, under those uh, under those guidelines, then, doctors. So, is it fair to say that Ontario could be back to normal, whatever normal is, uh, after August sixth, or is it possible that could even be before August sixth? I mean, you, you're moving into step step three five days early. You moved into step one uh, two days early. I mean, the, the people are doing their bit. They're getting their shots. Is it possible that we could be in whatever you don't, you don't want to call it step four, we could be back to normal before August 6th or is August 6th still that, is that kind of, is that date more set in stone than say July 12th, or July 21st was for, uh, for all, step three? All of the steps, the decision-making has been driven by data and by um, the immunization rates primarily. 
um, uh, in, together with public health and hospital measures. Uh, uh, and I'm happy to say we achieved those goals early um, uh, in Ontario, um, especially on the immunization front. Uh, they, they are really um, quite strong and positive and, and, and want to thank all Ontarians. Um, uh, as far as predicting uh, uh, when uh, step three would close by the act, it's 21 days. Um, uh, the reopening of Ontario uh, plan, uh, and we will follow the data as we've done before. If it comes earlier, uh, it will only be thanks to all Ontarians who've been able to limit the spread of the virus, the impact on the hospital, and, and achieve the immunization targets that we set out. Next question. Your next question comes from Holly McKenzie Sutter from the Canadian Press. Holly, please go ahead. Hi, doctor. I just wanted to get some clarity on the restaurant capacity limits because um, they don't seem to be as clearly defined as other sectors. Um, it doesn't have a set number for uh, the capacity limit. So just hoping you could spell that out, that it's not the 25 people indoors laid out for indoor gatherings and what the physical distancing rule is, if it's two meters like in other sectors or it's a little more um, flexible, kind of just depending on the space they're working with. So any more clarity you can give on that would help. Thanks. Oh, sure. So for, for restaurants, it's two meter distancing uh, in the restaurant and two meters between uh, tables uh, with uh, no limits at the tables in terms of individuals. Uh, and uh, hence, it's basically a capacity issue decided by each facility uh, on that distancing. So we haven't set a, a cap uh, nor a limit um, uh, it's basically mainly on the distancing involved. Follow up? Great, thanks. Yeah, thanks. I wanted to ask as well about um, how kids under 12 are factoring into the planning here for reopening, just because that's a big group um, that isn't eligible for vaccination. Like, how are you thinking about that population with the reopening plan? And when are families with kids in the household and in the family, uh, going to get guidance for what you know the, the best practices will be for them. Yeah, so very good. We've heard from Health Canada um, that they there are ongoing reviews of vaccine uh, for that population, and we may hear further early in the fall uh, on the trials that are occurring in that age population. So that gives me hope uh, that a vaccine will be available potentially even this year for that age group. Uh, and uh, that we would work with our public health partners, um, your local public health agencies, uh, to be able to deliver the vaccine uh, to those individuals, most likely in partnership with the primary care and pharmacies. So we're planning for that. Um, we're hoping to get further news on when that vaccine could be available. The other component is um, generally uh, children under 10 don't have as many of the receptors that this virus binds to uh, and don't have as severe an illness. Uh, so that's great news. Uh, as well, uh, when we find that we provide good community immunity, so we have very high rates of vaccine coverage, children are protected and their rates uh, are kept low. So we all have a duty and obligation to get vaccinated and by getting vaccinated and reducing the risk at a community level, we protect our children. Um, uh, and we all want the safest uh, opening of schools in September uh, that we can achieve and that is best achieved through maximizing immunization, having the lowest rate of community infection we can achieve uh, and that will lead to protection of our children. Last question. Your last question comes from Richard Southern from 680 News. Richard, please go ahead. Hi, doctor. Good afternoon. Uh, you're opening uh, restaurants and retail with no capacity limits, but uh, places like movie theaters and gyms have a 50% capacity. Oftentimes, those places are, are larger than, than restaurants are. I know a lot of people are questioning why this is the case. Can you shed some light on your decision making on that, please? Yeah, so that there will still be um, the opportunity to ensure that individuals screen so they don't have, um, uh, they, they're monitored before they go in. Um, there'll be signage that um, would indicate whether you've got any signs or symptoms compatible with COVID, please don't come in. Uh, and uh, uh, there'll still be ongoing uh, requirement to uh, identify who's been at the table so that we can um, do any case and contact management if required. Um, so there, there, um, 
the risk assessments will be will be done. Uh, there will be distancing and masking in, in these environments as well um, to limit the spread. Um, so I hope that answers some of the question. Follow up, and this okay, is and just a, thanks, Doctor. Just two parts on this follow up, if you don't mind. But you mentioned the masking requirements. How long do you see that going on for? Do you see it going on through the flu season? And also, if worse comes to worse and there is an uptick in the virus, would the steps be rolled back by public health units or would you roll the entire province back a step? So a lot of hypotheticals there. Uh, so um, we will follow the data. And if, it, if there are regional or specific local health unit uh, outbreaks like that are occurring now, um, we would work with those health units to try to get their uh, infectious disease COVID activity under control um, by sub supporting uh, their actions, uh, providing additional vaccine, whatever's required, uh, and or any public health measures that they would want to put in play to limit the spread within their communities and stop it seeding to other regions. And that's worked well at present uh, with the two examples that we have. Um, as for the fall, um, we don't anticipate providing uh, any um, regulatory requirement to wear masks uh, if we can keep COVID-19 under control. Uh, it, it will be my advice, my personal advice as the Chief Medical Officer of Health, uh, to continue uh, wearing a mask. I'll certainly wear one on the subway, on a bus, on the train um, throughout this uh, winter um, uh, to uh, limit my ability uh, uh, to transmit the virus. So it's important to know that even if you're vaccinated, a small proportion of those vaccinated can still get ill. Uh, roughly 5 to 10 percent could get the symptoms of COVID-19. Another percentage, 20 to 30, could actually still carry the virus in their nose uh, and then transmit it uh, once the mask is taken off to others that are potentially vulnerable. Um, uh, and so my part in trying to reduce the spread of this uh, to vulnerable members of our community that can't get vaccinated or who are immune suppressed uh, at a personal level will be to continue to wear the mask throughout the fall till we get real clear guidance that we've um, limited the spread uh, of COVID-19. Thanks everyone.